Rather, back to what I was saying for I was rudely interrupted. So the nigga motherfucking said that I attacked seven kids, his son. It's all over YouTube, seven. You can look it up right now. I can email it to you right. I'll email it to you later. I jumped on the, I hit the fucking stranger. I said, hold up, nigga, you a damn lie. So you want to make this claim about me? Play it now. I don't have to play anything. Why don't you when you just made a false accusation about me? You just told Seven it's all over YouTube and you can send him the motherfucking links via message. I'm right here right now. Play it right now for everybody. What Seven did do, which I commend him, he kicked the nigga off because the nigga refused to play the audio because I never attacked Seven's child. The screensaver you're looking at was stolen from True Freeman's page. He probably got it from a Google search. It's kind of ironic. It's the word truth, but it's made up of tiny little lies. Followed by the caption, you can't handle the truth. That's kind of appropriate in this case. Because the audio that you just heard was of True Freeman on Seven Deadly Sins show refuting or attempting to refute an accusation that was made against him that he called Seven's son a half-breed and some other names. And while many people, myself included, do recall hearing True Freeman go on a rant and then bring up Seven's kids, a well, kid, and talk about him being a half-breed and whatever because his mother is white and Seven is, is Jamaican, black, Afro-Jamaican. We don't have the evidence of that readily at hand. And that's fine. It makes it very difficult to prove. It becomes a he said, she said thing. And I'm okay with that. I know what happened in my own head, as do other people. And I really don't have to prove it to everyone else. At this point, it's become a game of either you believe what he says or he doesn't. And if you're on the side of believing what he says, then that's on you. And everything that comes from it is on you. Tyra has built up a pattern, a history of lying. We all know this. He'll lie about the smallest little thing. He'll lie about things that are completely unnecessary. I can't say that I've ever heard him tell 100% the truth in any situation. But again, that's neither here nor there. The reason why I play that audio right there is because of the standard Tyra is setting for the rest of us. He has said that he will not stand by and have an accusation placed against him and not have the accuser present evidence and answer for it. Yet, he has chosen to accuse Super Saiyan Jim of poisoning his dog Lola and refuses to present proof, any sort of evidence of any kind. I say Jim had nothing to do with it, but this is what Tyra says. They over there saying there's no way Jim Porn is poisoning his dog. Uh, give us the truth. Lola was old. She barely could walk. She was about to die. Bitch, I didn't show y'all videos of Lola still trying to jump the fucking front gate, bitch. Lola was to the beat. Y'all sitting up here making all these goddamn lies trying to say Jim. There's no proof that Jim did it. How is there no proof when Jim been dropping shit on my property trying to kill my dog for two years? 
Now, I can't say with 100% certainty that he doesn't truly believe this in his head. But if you put together all of the facts that have been happening over the last few days, it only points in one direction. And it's that Tyra is once again lying and attempting to use that lie to manipulate law enforcement into believing that Super Saiyan Jim is a killer. So you can pin this on him and hopefully it will get them to move quicker and try to find Jim. Which is weird because... Tyra says that he has uh, Jim's full name. He says he has his parents' address. He says he has Jim's address. He has Jim's license plate. And he knows where he knows where he lives, what kind of car he drives. If you have all this information about a person, why wouldn't you just have the police go get him? And if it's that bad, we're talking an eight-hour drive, supposedly, why wouldn't you go get him yourself or at least confront him show up on his doorstep make sure you have the right house and be like hey now i know where you are but let's listen to what tyra had to say when animal care and control showed up in his house with a police escort You know, they talk about shit, man. They killed Moses. So, guys, I'm buried. But this was yesterday, the police didn't come. And, and I'm, I'm recording, I'm live. You're fine. Good job, yesterday. That's what I had to do yesterday. They talked. They got rats in my family. That had not come But I had that to deal with yesterday. So, if y'all did come, it was. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't leave her. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so you know what I'm saying? What he did. All the people then got threatened and they said, hey, uh, I got to find something. He told me what video of him days ago and told us that he had something coming for us to wait for. We didn't have any idea. And then she went no outside. Way. She was perfectly fine. She come back in. I say within hours, it's just like she started laying around, kept wagging her tail and stuff like that. All right, what you just heard was Tyra and Donna telling the police that Jim killed Lola, that he dropped poison in the backyard, and that they already buried Lola, that she's gone. She's, they, they removed her from the house. He also describes that she was fine. She went outside, did whatever, came back in the house, laid down, started wagging her tail, and then died in the night. That doesn't sound like poisoning at all. The one thing that poison does is create a reaction in the body of animals and in humans. Two things start happening. It tries to get the, it tries to get the poison out. And it only has two methods of doing this. The way it came in, or the way everything else exits. Poison, or anything else that disrupts the body's system, and the, the stomach and intestines and all that stuff, either forces your body to throw it up, or shit it out. He said Lola came in, Wagged, started wagging her tail, laid on the floor, and then was dead by morning. That is not poisoning. Poisoning would have been drooling, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach cramps, anything like that. Now put aside the fact that it doesn't look like poisoning at all. It's not showing any of the symptoms of having been poisoned. Let's assume it was. And Jim is the person that we're looking at for having done it. 
does he have an alibi for a Saturday? If we look at his MO, all of his previous videos, he goes, he uh, shows himself driving there, he shows what he does when he's there, and uh, he uploads all this to YouTube. Everyone knows when Jim is in Indy. Everyone knows what Jim does when he's in Indy. He doesn't hide this at all. But on top of it not following the normal MO, Jim actually has an alibi. If you look at this video here, you can see Jim was on a live stream, on a panel, most of the day, um, doing what Jim does. Um, have a listen. Floor and drop you the fuck down on your head. Nigga, that's oh, why none of you niggas pull up you on me in real people. life. Fool. You hate gay people that drop much? Address, though. I'm that nigga hey, drop hey, address, hey, though. Hey, Yo, 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 Oh, I you know, thought so. That's when you better run the game. I, I heard that. And Tyrus sunned him like a bitch. Yeah, I know he did all that. But Rex's what? new yeah. name, Rex's guess new what? name yeah. is Levi guess, Moore. Guess what? That's Levi he Moore. Me down right there. Philly, nigga. I pulled up. Levi Moore, right there. I turned my camera on, showed you where I was, right, Jim. How the hell you let True Freeman get you like that? I owe you, niggas. That's sad. For 40 minutes, he was third. Aside from the fact that it's really hard to fly a drone and make precise bombing drops on a target and be on a live stream participating in a panel at the same time, Jim also has one other piece of evidence working in his favor that says he is not responsible for Lola's death. This is actually, in my opinion, the smoking gun. There's something that Tyra neglected to tell the animal care and control guy and is trying to hide from YouTube in general. Besides the fact that he refuses to show evidence or any sort of proof of what Lola did the hours before she passed, aside from the fact that he refuses to get a necropsy, or any sort of uh, present any sort of evidence that shows that Lola could have been poisoned. Doesn't say that she had uh, diarrhea or vomiting or anything of the sort. Besides all that, there's Tyra's own words. The words he neglected to tell animal care and control. Have a listen. Liz, I got to get with you. I'm going to... You know what's crazy, Liz? I'm going to hit you up. I don't know if I'm going to make it today because I got to get up off her and do some other shit. But you know what we just talked about? Not last night, but the night before. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know what the fuck going on. And I don't, I don't know. I got to talk to you. You know, for us, what we love. I, 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 it's, it's crazy because after I talk to you, it's like within 48 hours now I'm going through almost exactly. I don't know if it's exactly what you, the last conversation we had, but I got a problem. And you the only person I can talk to on the phone outside of YouTube. Whew, I don't know what the fuck going on. It was crazy. And it has to deal with low. I'll say that. I don't know. It is just like overnight. It's a problem. Oh my God, man, I'm getting. It. Let me let me shut up. Man, I already said. It. In case you didn't understand what he just said, Tyra just said that Lola has been sick for more than forty eight hours. Prior to that conversation he was having. And that conversation was two days before Lola died. So if you're even a little good at math, that means Lola had been sick for about a week before the day 
she died. The last time Jim was in Indiana was Tyra's birthday, which was two months ago. Two months ago. And what he dropped two months ago, he did not drop any soap or lick or dawn dish soap or, or toothbrushes or anything of the sort. He dropped a fake EMP, a small, barely functioning electronic device that Tyra admits when he looks out of his window on the roof of his deck, he can see it. It's still there. Tyra just admitted that Lola had been sick for a week and he was going to talk to Liz about it and not to the vet. He believes his dog was sick and did not take her to the vet. And a week later, she died. Tyra is 100% responsible for Lola's death and no one else. Negligence. He let the dog walk around the house sick for a week. And then is surprised when she dies and wants to blame everyone else. Smoking gun. Smoking gun, if you ask me. Tyra had seven dogs at the time that he had Lola walking around out in that yard. Every single one of those dogs walked in that same yard. But only Lola was the one to get sick and die. Why is that? Now, why he was discussing this or why he had planned on discussing this with Liz instead of taking Lola to the vet to have the vet check her out and tell him what's going on. I would say surprises me, but it doesn't. We've all seen how he does, how he locks up his dogs in cages for 20 hours at a time sometimes. How We've all seen how they've gone for hours without food and water. We've all seen points where he opened up the cage to the, to the dog's pen where they were and witnessed the dog run out past him and find the closest source of water and start drinking. We've all seen this. Tyra goes almost an entire week without cleaning the enclosure where the dogs are. He'll be on live stream all day and forget to feed his dogs. He's negligent. He has a history of negligence. He had another dog, Bruno, that was taken by the state. That was, as the animal care and control person said, emaciated. Skin and bones. No food or water around. And numerous sores across his body. They took that dog because Tyra was negligent. So here we have a person who has a history of telling lies, a history of being negligent, and has shown live on air a pattern of him locking up dogs for 15, 20 hours at a time. No food, no water, no attention. No ability to go to the bathroom and relieve themselves, stretch their legs. These dogs came into his house at 9 and 11 weeks old. Puppies, newborn puppies. They were shoved in a cage. They've grown old in that cage. Quadrupled in size. And now are at the point where they have no space to move within that cage and they sit there the entire day every day they don't have so much as a blanket to lay on they lay on cold metal bars 
This is cruel and this is negligent. But getting back to Lola. Lola was about nine years old, according to Donna. Somewhere between eight and nine years old. Lola was overweight. Lola has had four previous litters and three miscarriages. Lola has had parvovirus two to three times. Lola had poor nutrition. She ate kibble her entire life. Standard grocery store dog food, the worst thing you could possibly feed a dog. Except for the one month period where he suddenly decided that he was going to emulate Boss Man and start feeding his dogs a raw diet, or what he called a semi raw diet, which consisted of, again, kibble, grocery store dog food, and raw chicken. Raw chicken that can carry salmonella. Raw eggs that can carry salmonella and eggshells, which a human nor a dog's digestive system can process. The proper way to feed your dog eggshells, and these are for people who are looking for a, a calcium supplement for their dogs, you could easily do this in bones, but again, bones can be tricky, especially if they're cooked. You don't want to do cooked bones, you want to do raw bones. But getting ahead of myself. Um, if you want a, something a little safer than dog bones, there's always eggshells, but they must be powdered eggshells, not crushed in your hands. I'm talking mortar and pestle. Powdered eggshells. That's the only way it's going to be able to be digest. Otherwise, it's just going to come right out the other end. There are also pills for that. Uh, there's also yogurt, plain yogurt. Dogs love it, and it will do the same thing as eggshells. You don't have to do any crushing. You can just add one teaspoon or tablespoon, depending on the side of your dog, to their food, and that's more than enough. And for anyone stupid enough to believe his lies, if at this point you still think that Jim is responsible for this in some way, if you think that it was soap or toothpaste that killed Lola, let's entertain that argument for a second. Tyra did a Google search and he came up with a chemical found inside toothpaste called xylitol. Put that in the back for a second. The things Jim drops. Soap, toothbrushes, toothpaste. Let's go with the toothbrushes. Toothbrushes, they would serve as a good chew toy for a dog, and that's about it. Soap. Soap, while causing dogs and people an upset stomach, will not kill them. The worst hazard you can get, you can find from a, from a dog eating soap, is uh, a choking hazard. They could choke on it. And that's about it. Upset stomach, maybe some diarrhea, some vomiting, but at the end of the day, soap is not going to kill a dog. Going back to the toothpaste, the most dangerous chemical inside toothpaste, which Donna had brought to Tyra's attention, attention is xylitol. Xylitol, when taken in large amounts, is capable of killing a dog. If you look here, it says that about uh, 3.5 ounces can kill a dog 
of less than 35 pounds. Lola is about 100 pounds, I'd have to say. She's overweight, that's for sure. She's looking very big, or she was looking very big towards the end. Lola was about 100 pounds. So 100 pounds, uh, you need 3.5 ounces for 35 pounds. Lola would need about three small tubes of toothpaste before it became dangerous for her. We're thinking, well, we're talking about uh, 10, maybe 10 and a half ounces. And those are travel size toothpaste. So we'd have to eat three full tubes of toothpaste. which was not present in the backyard. He'd have found it, I imagine, over the next two months. Since uh, over the two months since Jim had been there. In any case, death from xylitol would come at, in the form of hypoglycemia. Death would happen in about 10 to 15 minutes of ingestion and it would cause uh, liver necrosis. Now, if you know anything about hypoglycemia, a dog experiencing that uh, low blood sugar would start shaking and would probably faint. But the shaking, shaking and seizures would be obvious. Tyra said Lola came in the house, wagged her tail a little bit, and laid down. That is not hypoglycemia. So if you ask me, and I wasn't there, I don't have all the evidence, but from what I'm hearing, it doesn't sound like Lola, Lola was poisoned at all. And if you're going to convince me, or even attempt to convince me, that it was, I'm going to need to see a toxicology report. I'm going to need to see um, evidence of toothpaste or soap around Lola's mouth. And that could have been done in the form of a, a screenshot. Well, not a screenshot. <laughs> that could have been done in the form of a picture. A simple picture once you saw it. But none of the above has happened. Fortunately for Tyra, I do have a suspect. I have scoured the internet and I have come across someone who has confessed to Lola's death. They said they did it and they said why. I want to warn you, if you're still watching this video, the next portion is a bit disturbing, but it was there. Uh, I think the person has taken it down since. I recorded it, and um, we got to put it out. I mean, you're responsible, you're responsible. So this is on you. Um, this is the person who is taking responsibility for... Lola's death. Have a look. I did it for the rock. I did it for the people. I did it. I did, uh, shut your mouth, you thong wearing fatty. I'm up here. I came back because you made an accusation against me that's untrue. 